sorry. Okay, this is nice. <laughs> Anybody on the line, on the phone? <laughs> no. Speaker is on. <laughs> Just lit up. Voice. We have a bunch of different things going on. Voice. Voice, voice, voice. So if you can't stay up and, and, and behave, then you have to go to sleep. Mom, can you do the healing thing of laughing too much? Uh-huh. Hmm? <laughs> Everyone, stop. Going to bed if this continues, okay? Lori, laughing is a, a chain reaction. There's a phone that's on the cord already. The tablets are going live. Okay, we're good. Okay. We're live here. I don't know if anyone is on the phone, just say hello. I don't know if you can hear people live on there. Hello? You don't think you hear people? The speaker's lit up, so it's lit up, right? It's fine. Yeah. Okay, how are you? okay, if anyone is on the phone, just let me know, okay? I'm ready to start whenever you're ready. So. Why is it doing that? It's literally upside down. Okay. Okay, please. Don't take rest of my thing. It's not working. You're not working? No, this is not working, so it's just not turning. The whole thing is upside down. Well, that's all right. People can get used to it. No, it's upside down. It's not working. I think. Is it live? I'm just curious, is there anybody on this speakerphone? Anybody dialed in? Boys, go to bed. Good night. Go to bed. I'm going live right now. Go to bed. I'm going actually. Okay, we are live on Facebook. She's trying. Someone's trying to get on? Let me get on that. It's not working? She says, I'm trying. Okay. You guys are just okay. sitting very nicely. Let's go. So listen, you just pay attention, please, you know, to this. And yes. We'll talk, we'll get, we'll take up comments later. Is anybody viewing? Is anybody commenting? Anybody say um, anything? No. No? Okay. Okay. We have learned this memory before. Okay. Uh, you know, but because I'll say, our sages say, that uh, one who learns and doesn't chazar is like one who reaps and never sows. You guys know what that means? Reaping and not sowing? Nobody knows. What does it mean, boys? It means, well, sewing is a strange word because it's an English word that can mean sew like with a needle. But let's put it this way. It says that one who learns something once but doesn't repeat it, it's like he plants a seed but never harvests. Get it? Uh, yeah. He plants a seed and never harvests. That's somebody who learns but... Doesn't repeat. Doesn't repeat. Okay. Like so for, for, for two of us, at least, at the table here, this is Chazora. And this is the Maimon from the Alto Rebbe uh, on Chodesh Elo, the month that we just started. And I will tell you that this month is, this Maimon is a love song. It's a love song in which the Jewish people declare their love for God in this month. And as a result of which, we get assured that Rosh Hashanah will be a blessed, beautiful new year. So it starts with the Song of Songs, Shira Shira. Oh, there's someone on the line. Someone is there? On the phone? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Elisheva. Yeah. Good. So um, the, the protocol here is uh, we're going to, we've got people at the table and we've got you and some people on Facebook. 
Facebook people comment. Uh, whatever any comments you have a question, just store them up. And I'll stop here and there and uh, ask for questions. Sort of like we do in the morning. In the ten yes, okay? One little tiny request is you can put the phone closer to where you speak. Sure. Is that any better? I'm now talking. Okay. Yeah, okay, fine. Okay, you have the text in front of you. Ani ladaidi vadaidi li. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is with, is to me. This is from Song of Songs, which is, as probably everybody on the call knows, a metaphor for the relationship between the Jewish people and Hashem. And in this particular phrase, Ani ladaidi is speaking about us first. We are to God, and God is to us. And it happens, as the Alter Rebbe points out immediately, Rosh Hashanah Elo. So this month of Elo, in its very name, Aleph Lamed, Vav Lamed, hints to the fact that this is a time for us to be available to God, and if so, God will be available to us. Very different from uh, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah is the, the king on his throne coming down to us down here below. And in his day of in, in judgment and in mercy, but it's above the bub comes down to below. Here the below, we are looking up and saying, We want a relationship with you. And this will be explained in the mushal that the Alter Rebbe was Mahadish. The Alter Rebbe brings a mushal here of the king in the field, which will come to you. So he says, The Indian is this, it's known. In Elo begins the process of I am to my beloved, meaning we. The Jewish people are to God. The kind of Echinus is which is called in the language of Hasidus and Kabbalah, the arousal from below. And this goes, Ad Rosh Hashanah v'yem Kippurim, until Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Shehem Bechinus Ham Shochas, which on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the tables are turned. Here we are rising up from below to above, and on Yom Kippur, or Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the flow comes down from above to below. The Ham Shochah of godliness, Lemata, the Bechinus is Galus in a revealed way. Bukhamash Kosov, as it's written, this dance of dialogue, this uh, conversation between above and below, below, below and above, is expressed in also in Pasuk, Smoilei Takos his left hand lifts up my head, So the left hand, the left is always, of course, the side of Gevora. And Gavura is associated with davening, with prayer, where we lift up our voices. We constrict our, as we've had in the, we started the, the Mimer and Shema, talking about the words coming up from the depths of the chest and being constricted and expressed by the lips. So that's the left, the Gavura, as we express in the oisius, in the letters of Tefillah. And that lifts up my head. I lift up my head from below to above. And then his right hand reaches out and hugs me. Shem Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, because from the time of Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, those are Seros Yimei Teshuvah, Hu Bechinus Smoilei. That's the left side. Why is it called the left side? Because it's a din. It's a Yom HaDin. It's the left side. Bechinus Yira, which is fear or awe. Right? In fact, in English, they always translate this period of days of awe. And the days of awe are the left side. So it's interesting. So we lift up our voice. We constrict our voice now. And that's a, a lifting up, which is a constriction. And that motivates, well, the arousal from below motivates an arousal from above, that Hashem could, could, comes down initially with his left hand. And Sha'oz Huzman his Galus Mahusi is brought it and reveals his kingship. Kingship is always seen primarily, although the king, at deep in his heart, is all about loving the people, but he manages the people with dinim, with judgments. Malachi, and therefore, Korin Lei Hamela, and that's why we call him the king. All Rabban Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, Malchus. Ki Malchus Echol Malchus Kol Oilam, because it's his kingship, his expressing himself in a particular role, which is a contraction for himself, which is called the kingship of all the worlds. Even in the, the highest, highest worlds, people of Lehem Amos there falls upon all of the creation. This is Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. There falls on the creation a tremendous 
fear or trembling. This uh, alludes to, by the way, the same fear and trembling that uh, took place when we received the Torah. When we received the Torah, that was an awesome revelation from above. As, as it says, Hashem held a, a barrel over, the mountain over our head like a barrel. It was such a great love that our souls flew out of our body and we stood, bepacha, that's the word that's used over the air also. And, and our souls flew out of our body. Now that's the union of Rosh Hashanah. And as a result of that, this arousal from above, the malchus of Hashem coming down from above, has the equal and opposite effect down here below, that we receive His kingdom. And our fear, dread, awe of Him is upon us all year long. Because one's love and fear or awe of God are not implanted in the heart of a person from himself. It's from a ray, an expression of God that comes from above. Yesus man his at the time of its revelation. And it finishes by saying, in Sukkis is the time of love. So we have Tishrei, Tishrei where there's huge revelations from above, Din on Rosh Hashanah, uh, that's the left side, and Yira, and then the right side, love, which is the holiday of Sukkis. And that's the second part of our Pasuk, the Doidi Li. But in order for this to happen, in order for the arousal from above to be aroused and to be expressed, there has to be an Avaviyira Agidei There has to be a love and an awe of Hashem generated down here below. And this is the preparatory month of El. So let me stop here for a moment. Uh, any questions, comments, or address any? any Esther, do you have anything on your screen? No. no. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'm holding, uh, this is, it's a, it has a big Lamed Bayes on the first page. I gave you only two pages, Lamed Bayes, and two sides of Lamed Bayes. And we're holding, uh, on the right-hand column, the bottom third of the page is where the mimer begins, on in the Doidi, and we're holding from the bottom of the page, one, two, three, four, five, five lines up, six lines up, five lines up. Okay. Behinei is known. That in Elul is the time of the revelation of the thirteen attributes of mercy. These thirteen attributes of mercy we say, of course, every day in davening, and these attributes are revealed also on Yom Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But we have to then understand something. If this is such a great revelation, the whole month of Elul, why isn't it a yantu? Because you'd give me the Sarat and I'll reveal a Yantu. The Enam Yantu, Kamai Sheb Shabbos, this is not like Shabbos, the Yantu. Shabbahem is Galus Elakus, where we have great revelations of godliness. Abichina, we have the levels of Ha'or Elakus, the radiations of godliness. But with Fabri, this is Manu Gimel Mida Shehema Oris El Yonis Ma'oid, and particularly when, particularly when we have the great revelations of the 13 attributes of mercy. Which are revealed on Yom Kippur. And certainly there's a big difference. Now, truthfully, we've always encapsulated in a certain way the big difference. The big difference is in Elul, and we'll, we'll elaborate, the Maimon will elaborate on this, that in Elul, we're sowing seeds in a, great, in a garden up above. And the seeds that we're bringing ourselves out, as we're going to see in a moment, into the field where the king is available to everybody. He's made himself available to everybody. And anybody who wants, regardless of their level, regardless of their level in Avodis Hashem, regardless of where they're holding in Amunis Hashem, in Betochen in Hashem, as long as you want to see the king, the king has made himself available. Those are the Yud Gimel attributes of mercy available in Elo. In Tishrei, and in Yom Kippur, what happens is that this arousal starts from above. 
This is after a great amount of shuva, right? We have 10 days of shuva. In Elo, we're not talking quite yet about shuva. We're talking here just about opening ourselves up and hugging the king, opening up our arms, opening up our souls, opening up our ratzen, our desire to see the king. And that arouses his great, his attributes of mercy. So Hina, it's known. This is the bottom of the page, now moving up to the left-hand column. Akhina Yuvin, the whole is understood. This, the difference between the Yud Gimel Midas Arachamim in El versus the Yud Gimel Midas Arachamim in uh, Tishrei, will be understood by the famous, this I say is famous, it's famous certainly in Chabad, the marshal of a melech, the mo- of a king, Shekoidim Borla Ir, before he comes into the city, Yoysin Anshe Ha'ir, the men, people of the city go out, Likreise, to meet him, Umakablin Ponov, and they receive his face besada in the field. So imagine this, you know, the king of the universe has decided to give us a little help here, a little help. He's not going to wait for Rosh Hashanah and wait for our tshuva. He's going to sort of jumpstart our relationship with him. And in a way that's very different in Rosh Hashanah, because in Rosh Hashanah, as I said, we have Psukim Amalthus, coronation. It's the coronation day. This is the day when the fields, when the king strips himself of his, this whole month, strips himself of his robes and his crowns and his crown. We know he's the king. We know he has great power. But he's relating to us on a level that one-to-one, person-to-person. And he comes out in the field. In the, in the mind, in many other memorials, there are many memorials that, that are built on this memorial. And in one of them, in one of the memorials that the, from the Rebbe, he, uh, he explains that what's the field, what, what's, the, what's significant about the field. Uh, it's hard to remember the days when agriculture was our predominant mode of, of, of survival. After hunting and gathering, we became agriculturalists. And everything that we, that we, that we, that we all our, our, everything we need for survival comes from the field. The field is a source of life. The field is a source of grain. The field is a source of bread. And bread is, the, is what we live on. So he comes out to this field. And it's another way you can look at it. It's a level playing field. There's no hierarchy here. Elo is a time when there is no hierarchy. It's not Melech the Kisai, the throne, the Melech on his throne. The Melech becomes on the ground equal to us and says, if you want to be close to me, I'm here. And that's how the marshal goes on. He comes out in the field. And there in the field is permitted for anyone who wants Lotzes to go out to the field and to receive his face. And he receives everybody. And that word kulam is explained also in other words. Everybody, regardless of your state, regardless of whether you believe in him, I just want to see him. I want to see the king, you know. Everybody's talking about the king. Let me see him. I don't really have a relationship with him, but everyone else does, so let me see him. Whether you have a relationship with God or not, whether your relationship is a relationship with that you're enjoying, or whether it's a struggle. Whatever the relationship, Kulam, he receives everybody. The save upon him office with a beautiful, beautiful face, a beautiful face, Umar upon him, and he shows his face, upon him, a smiling face to everybody. And I'm stopping here with Kevin. Another arrival at the table. Right. Maybe. <clears throat> so we're in the middle of this uh, this beautiful marshal. I mean, I, as I started at the beginning of the class, this this mimer is a love song of the Jewish people to God. Ani Ladoide, we are singing our hearts out to God, and He's listening, and He's listening to all of us. He's living. He doesn't care about the, the degree. The degree the he doesn't care about the, the degree of sin, the degree of sidkus of righteousness or the degree of non-righteousness. He doesn't care about whether we have a muna in him or we don't have a muna in him. He's in the field. The king is in the field. 
This Derek Agar told me to send me a picture of Elvis Presley. Hmm? It said the king is in the field. Mm -hmm. All right. Just a side note. But it's, it, it, you, you could use that sign. We have, you know, in our culture, I grew big, great superstars. And they're not accessible, except at the concerts and at the gala events, right? So the king is not normally accessible. And Rosh Hashanah, he doesn't, we don't have that kind of access. So we have access. And that access is a two, paves a twofold path, a path by which we arouse his interest in us not for our behaviors, but for the kernel of the chelak elakam and mal that we are. We're a part of him. We're part of him. And, it's, and the other part is that this, so we arouse that in him, and he arouses, just by opening himself up and being there for us, a tremendous opportunity for us to just pour ourselves out, our hearts out to him, and he's listening. No judgment. For all before Yom Hadin. So he goes out to the field, and he's looking with a shining, beautiful face. Whereas, when he goes into the city, we go after him, and afterwards, so he goes into the chamber of his kingship. And there, not everybody can go there with permission. And even moreover, those who are the most chosen of the people, and very special people, they're the only ones who can go there. So this now will come to, I mean, I've been talking a lot about the Nimshol, but the, I mean, what this is an analog for. So similarly, in Chodesh Elo, in Chodesh Elo, Yitzoyen lekabel or Pono, we go out to the field. We go out to the, the field. Again, the field that was the most of the field is the source of life, where all the agriculture and the plants and the vegetables and everything we need for life, we have access to it. We have access to, the, to life as a metaphor for the life of lives. Achai Achai is God himself. We go out there, and he shows his pun of his water basoda, and he shows us his face in the field. Heine Kasiv, it's written... Yor Hashem Ponabelach, it's a posse. Hashem illuminates, shines his face to you. Shehu Inyan Horas Yud Gimel Midas Rachamim, which is the showing of the 13 petal rose, the 13 attributes of mercy. Why I'm saying 13 petal rose? Because this posse that we start, Ani Vadadi Li, goes on, and what we'll talk about in the second part. It says, Ani Vadadi Li, Horoya Bishashani. I am to my beloved, and my beloved is to me, who nourishes me amongst the roses. Is there any mimer that actually goes through the meaning of the 13? Because I hear 13... Uh, there's I there's not a mimer that I know of, but there are, there's a lot written about it. Uh, so like uh, Adin Steinzel? Adin Steinzel has a book called 13, 13 Petal, Petal Rose, um, 18 Aisha Torah, and many other places. And first of all, the 13, the 13 Attributes of Mercy... Uh, what, for 13 petals, there is such a thing, apparently. I've never seen a rose, I've never counted the petals. But there is such a thing. And it's explained that it has red and white petals within it. Mm. Uh, red is Gavura, hot, heat, fire. White is Chesed. All inclusive, un, 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 non judgmental giving, right? So the 13 petal rose. Is a symbol of that, and what is what is mercy in the Kabbalah in the in the structure of the spheros? You guys know it's a blend of chesed and gevura. It's a blend of red and white. So that's that's a shot that's explained. But I, as I said, I've never seen this in my morim. I've, I've just seen it in other places. And then <clears throat> the thirteen petal the rose is also explained in Kabbalistic writings that it refers to the source of all Jewish souls above in Malchus of Atzilus, where all the souls come out from that place. Mm -hmm. And it's, as it says in the page, it's equivalent to the 13 attributes of mercy. And so the word Shashanin is very important. The 13 attributes, they're somewhat higher than Kesser? The 13, excellent. The 13 attributes are, at least in Kesser, they're, they're, they're Makif, they're Soivit. Mm -hmm. 
and they, they go way, way up beyond Kesser into the higher levels of, but all, in, in, you could put them all in Kesser, just that there are levels and levels and levels of Kesser. And one of the, the aspects of Kesser, for instance, even if you, if you go, well, I'll express it in terms of Kabbalistic uh, expression as, as Brahmin considers. The highest world we know is the world of Atsilus, right? And it says in, in Zohar, Leish Smola Bahayatika. Uh, Leish Smola, yeah. And, and higher than Atsilus is what, where the panemius of the crown, the inner dimension of the crown, is called Atik Yoimim. So we have two levels of the crown. So we have crown Atik Yoimim on top, Erek Anpin on the bottom, and we have Atsilus, right? And Atsilus, everything is godly. There's no, there's no sense of separation whatsoever. And in Atik it says, Lay small of a high atika. There's no left in atika. It's all white. And we're going to talk about uh, a little bit later turning the red into white. In other words, turning the sweetening the gavors so that everything becomes merciful, meaning that the judgment, there's no, it's, it's a very interesting thing to me. It's, and I mean, myself want to understand this better. Why Rosh Hashanah is really called Yom Adin? When the 13 attributes of mercy, transcend din, they transcend judgment. It's really a time of revelation from above to below of God's mercy and his, his re-engagement with the world. Yes, we, have, we do shuva to, to, to express our interest in that, but he does it. So uh, the 13 attributes of mercy and the 13 petal rows all are symbolic of atik yoimim or, or things higher than the seder histal shuvas. And I hope that's meaningful to most of the people who are listening. And if not, just put it aside and just think of what's here on the page, that the 13 attributes of mercy, mercy, when a person is merciful, he looks at someone, just, when a judge has mercy, it says in, in, in Chassidus that, that a judge, that there's no mercy without das. What does that mean? That a person has to be able to, a judge has to be able to weigh two sides of a story. You know, if a person looks only at the, can only see that this person is guilty, it's going to be a harsh din. If the person can only see that this person, or, or believes, that, and can only believe that this person is totally exonerable, then there's, not, then there's, no, there's no discipline whatsoever. So there has to be a, bl a blending of both. And that's the, the 13 attributes of mercy. Mercy inclines to chesed, but it inter-includes both Chesed and Gabor. That's about it for now, at least. Yeah. Since we're pausing, any other, any any questions or interests out there? Somebody asked me? why Mashiach can't sure. be a woman. Pardon? Why Mashiach can't be a woman. Somebody asked. Somebody asked why Mashiach can't be a woman. Random First question. of all, I could easily say, well, what relevance does that have to this class? There is right? no relevance. Somebody <laughs> just it's, it's asked. It's a good question. Uh, I can tell you that the, the only the reason that it can't be a woman is because of what the Torah says. It's Melech HaMashiach, it's not Malka HaMashiach. That's a reason. That probably is not a satisfying reason. Mashiach Ben David. Yeah, Mashiach Ben David, right? Right. That's the reason I'll be Negro. Is it going to be a couple? No. Mashiach is the son of David. Does he have to be married? Is he going to be married? How come we don't hear about Mashiach? When? When? Is yeah, the question, is Mashiach a couple or can, a, can Mashiach be married? What's the question? And why are we talking about this? Someone asked. <laughs> what is the role of Mrs. Mashiach? Wait a minute. <laughs> we'll, settle this, we'll settle this and we'll move on. I just want to get the question. Is, is the question, why can't he be, can he be married? Why can't, oh, that question. Who says he can't be married? I mean, most kings are married. There's a queen. Is it a prerequisite for him to be married? Is it a prerequisite? Role? That I don't know. All right, back to our story. <clears throat> and of course, I'm answering only just Dalpi Nigla, you know, that because it says so. That the Torah prescribes what Mashiach is. The panemius of it, I'm not explaining at all because I have nothing to say about it. When we go out, when we we're in Chodesh Elul, okay, we're out in the field. And how contrasting that to when he goes back into his palace, that's the one, two, three, four, fifth line down, column two. So the only people who have access to him are special. But here it's going to matter who you are, what your level is, 
What kind of relationship do you have? Are you a prince? Are you an officer? Are you a private in the army? Are you a peasant in the field? Now, all of these things are metaphorical. I mean, a prince, we'll call the prince the son of the king, meaning that the, the prince be, inherits not only the, the genes of the king, but as it, or inherits the genes of the king, including the spiritual genes of the king. So he's behaving as a prince. How are we behaving? Are we behaving like someone who is part and parcel of the essence of the king? Meaning we, we're behaving in ways which reveal, in which there's no separation between us and him, like a prince? Or are we farther distant? Those things matter when the king is in his palace. They don't matter in Chodesh Elo. Everybody can go out in the field. It's written, this is where we're, Hashem will shine his face to you. And that's what got us into the union of Yud Gimel Midas Arachim, the 13 attributes of mercy. Which means we will be face to face. Panemius to Panemius. The Hainan Shiyor Gili Panemius, as he says, they will shine, their shines, in Chaydesh Elo, a face to face relationship with the king. Gili Panemius Ratsanius Borg, a revelation of the innermost will of the king, the Mokka Neshom Israel, and that shines to the source of the Jewish souls. A Yideh Shiyor Ike Panemius Ratsanius Love, through this, which are main root and of our will is to him. And I can't repeat this enough. All of this, all of the simple meaning is, in Elo, all you have to do is want it. That's it. What do you want? The dove boy, to cling to him. With a heart and soul from the depths of your heart. And we'll see later that sometimes it takes a bit of challenges in life to feel this sense that I really, number one, am far from the king and I really, really want to be close. I'm, I'm existing in a state of isolation, separation, all of the things that we can just sum up as things that, that are causing negative feelings. And that's not where I want to be. And in El, that's all you have to do. That's not where I want to be. I'm going to run out to the field because the king is there and I can hug him in the month of El. And I want that from the depth of my heart, the Mesiris Nefesh, and I'm willing to give over anything. I'll sell, I'll sell my car to get uh, a trip to where the field where I can see the king. Anything. You just have to want it. Okay. This is a mouthful, a short mouthful. <laughs> this this desire is drawn down from the level, a name of God called Kale. In a, a, a later mimer in the same Parsha, as Parsha's for A, for uh, A, no, actually the first mimer in Parsha's for A, the Alter Rebbe defines what Kale is. Kale is the highest levels, the levels of Atik, the level, he calls it the level of the or in self itself where there's no limitations. I remember from another class that we mm -hmm. associated Kael with Chesed. Yeah, well, they're related. Remember, Ches, pure Chesed knows no limits, mm -hmm. knows no bounds. <clears throat> as, we were lear as we're learning in these sections of Tanya, God wants to do Chesed, chesed with the world. Now, he, that Chesed that he wants to get, do with the world and with us and with everything in creation is boundless. But in order for there to be a world, in order for there to be an us, which has an experience of something other than he, there has to be a devora, a contraction, a tzimtzum. So again, we see the two things going together, the integration of chesed and gevora, right? Kale is the, the place of, there's no distinctions. It's all chesed. At the highest level, the level of no distinctions is a life small of atika. There's no left in the atik. Or as he says in the Maimi that, that I am alluding to, <coughs> the first uh, Maimi in Re, Kale refers to the Ein Sof Borahu, the infinite, as he is infinite. Shehu Reishis Kol Hayud Gimel Midas. 
and he identifies that as the head, the kale. And we say kale racham v'chan, right? We say these mm-hmm. you're the sarachim every day. Kale racham v'chan, we lead with kale. That the... Uh, don't, we, don't we lead with Hashem Hashem? Yeah, we lead with Hashem Hashem, but we're talking, when we speak about, yes, the first, the 13 meters, we now enumerate them, right? Kale, racham v'chan, et cetera, et cetera. Your kebavki is a lower level than kale? Yes. Yes, I have to. She has. I don't know if everyone heard. She has. Is Yud K Wav K a lower level than, than Kale? And I answered yes, but it depends. Mm. Okay. What when when it's a lower level? Yud Chachma Hedina Vav Nidos. That's all. Say the Hesalsh was right. So that's a lower level, right? The higher level. We've we've spoken it's about this. Kim. Huh? Are they Kim is higher? No, no, no. The higher, no. There's two levels in Havaya. Havaya de la Sata, the lower level of Havaya, mm-hmm. and Havaya de la Ela. And Havaya de la Ela is the source of everything. Uh, but when we talk about Havaya de la Ela, we don't talk so much about that differentiation of Yud Chokma, contraction, expansion, mm-hmm. etc. Because that's a process. Now that process, when it when it starts going off in his mind, you know, that's the Yud Ke Vavke as it is in his thought. This level is a level that's before that, before that, pre-conscious level of God, before there's any consciousness of structure. And where does Shakai come from? Shakai, oh, Shakai is hold enough, Devorah, complete Devorah. So it restricts Kel? Say, la Allah may die, it's enough. Shin Dalad Yud, it's enough, yes, die, it's enough, I'm going to stop it. I limit it. That's the Gavoras. Usually Shakai is also comes right after Kel. I don't know. Hmm? Guess I can't comment on huh? Interesting. <clears throat> but again, in, this, in the right. order of, 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 of creation, you, there's always the interplay of flow and blockage of flow. Right? There have to be containers, which are the, the blockage, the holders, of the light. This is a topic we, in almost every... Every mimer and every discussion of Hasidus, these we come back to these Hasidic basics, right? The interinclusion of Hasidic words in every relationship. It's giving, giving, giving doesn't work. Holding back, holding back, holding back also doesn't work. You got to know when to roll them and when to hold them. Right? To That's an them. illusion from what? Poker. <laughs> When, no, the gambling. You got to know when to show them and when to hold them. That's a, that that's an illusion from Paul. Sure. There are times. Ta- well, we, there are times of the soul, right? She, she asks, "Does that work in our relationship with Hashem?" Hashem recognizes that there are. There's night and day. These are the two. Again, opposite. Day Chesed, night Gevura. Every soul, every person, on this call and in the room has a dark night of the soul and an illuminated day of the soul mm. right? and they interplay with each other and uh, so of course the trick is to have what's above those midos is moichin brains but the brain should modulate those feelings in ways that are conscious and rather than us being victims of them right yeah. sure what I meant to say is um, or I meant to ask is in our relationship with Hashem does Hashem underst- understand when we give and when we also restrain? Meaning, <clears throat> if there's that healthy boundary in our relationship with Hashem, does that make any sense? If there's such a thing, yeah, like a healthy. I'll tell you. I'll make. Yes, is there a way of a healthy boundary? In other words, we want Hashem. That's we want light. But we also is there a healthy boundary? Mm-hmm. Well, a healthy boundary is when we refrain from bringing sacrifices that are not, that he doesn't want. Strange fires going out of our brains with ecstasy, with love of God. It can happen, believe it or not. I mean, it happens, of course, in the Chumash, Pasen uh, Aviram, and those other uh, other players in the right. Chumash, right, who were just too much Ratzoy. In that, in that context, it's called Ratzoy Vashoyev, another pair, which is exactly the same thing. Ratzoy is running out, that's unadulterated chesed, and Shoyev is returning back. So you do, you have to know when to run and when to restrain from running. 
when you know, time to love, a time to a time to sing, a time to cry, a time to this, a right. time to that, and those are all godly meetups. He does the same thing. Is there a manual? He refrains, for this? right? He, what? Is there a manual to tell us what to do? This? The manual is the Torah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We have. A, yes. Is there a manual for this? <laughs> yes. <a> plot. <laughs> the, the answer is there. The Torah is the manual for this. How to achieve what? How to achieve the right balances? Absolutely. Hmm. We're moving on. Yep. Okay. Can we read out loud? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna. I was gonna say. Pardon me. Maybe you want to read. Wait. Before we move on. Question. Topic. What? Right. No, I mean, I admitted that I was uh, absolutely wrong in not counting them. But they, when you start characterizing them, he's, he's characterizing the shame kale, and that's his characteriz characterization of it. I can't. I just don't. I don't can't really speak because I don't know why it's prefaced by Hashem Hashem and what those things indicate. But thank you. No, I'm, I'm not trying to correct you. Right. No, but you have. That's good. Well, it's, I know he says right. Kel chehu reishis kol hayud gimel midas, right? I, I I hear your question. It's a good question. I mean, and I'm in. It's fine. I don't know the answer to the question, which is if you you have to count Hashem Hashem, and yet he's making the statement that kale is the beginning of all the yud gimel midas, and it's the source of all of them. So I don't I don't know. So we, in this class we have a a rule. That anybody who asks the question has to research it. No, it's not true. <laughs> but we'll all, we'll all research it. But good, thank you. Okay. Yes, now Esther brought up something. And I wanted this for those of you who are new. Uh, we uh, This class is, uh, has a brocha from the rabbi through a visit to the oil, right? Is it to the oil? Um, I, yeah, I would always tell the rabbi about our classes and then I... Right, so she told the Rebbe about her classes, and the Rebbe answered, what, through Egris or where? Yeah, I opened yeah. up the Egris. Opened up the Egris, and we have a bracha, Baruch Hashem, for this class. But the Rebbe asked, added something, which was very unexpected. He said it would be a good idea, in this answer, that uh, people who want to read should read, and that there shouldn't be just one reader and one talker, as has been the case so far in this class. So I'm putting on the table, uh, anyone who would like to read, volunteer. All right. Levi is volunteering. All right. Um, the line begins, maybe, Chinas Kale, Shehurash is called Yud Gimel Mirasarag. You see where I'm pointing? Mashukasa Kale Havaya. As it's written. Mashukasa Kale Havaya, the Ya'ar Lanu Shehu Bechinas Or. Or Aim Sok Barak. So it's a Pasuk. It's a Pasuk that's in Tilim, uh that it says God should radiate Kale. It says again, the name Kale Havaya. I mean, here's maybe a hint. Havaya comes after Kale, but I don't know what to make of that either. Kale Havaya shines to us, which is the level of the infinite light yeah. itself, unadulterated. Um, Atzma Mamash, Kamosha Kasev, Ki Havaya, Elokecha, Ish, Uchla, Hu. Because God, your God, is a consuming fire. Um, uh, Pirish, Kamole, Mashal Ziv, the Or Haish, Yotze, Min Haish, Atzma. This is like the Mashal of a, a ray of light from a fire. It's of the same substance that, you know, the jumping fire on the, on the campfire. It's all of the same substance. It's from the fire itself. Um, so there's no differentiation really between the fire and the light that comes from it. If you look at a fire, just imagine looking at a fire. You see jumping, gaseous, colored, colored movement. And that's the fire. But that colored movement is also illuminated. So there's not two things over there. 
There's a fire, and there's an illuminating fire. One thing. Kach Sheba Yachal Kavya. Sheba Hara. Haras Panim Hameir Le Kualos Yisrael. So similarly, if you could say such a thing, the so-called light of the face of God, which signs to shines to the Jewish people. Who midachinas kel shehu bechinas or ein sof baruch. So it comes from the level which is called kale. We're making a lot of this kale, right? Which is the level of the or in sof itself. It's like a fire. And it's not a fire that's, for instance, you can have a fire in a stove, in a, in a, in a, in a metal stove. And there, you know there's a fire, but you're not seeing, you're not experiencing the fire, you're experiencing the heat from the fire. So there's an indirect effect of the, of the fire on something else. When you're looking straight at the fire, if you were close to the fire, you'd be having a singular experience of fire, light, and heat at the same time, with no adulteration, without any concealment. So that's the shame kale. No concealment, just infinite, infinity expressed. Um, yeah, skip all those little lines. Um, I, have a, I have a question. Yes. If there's no concealment, then how can we actually exist with no concealment that contact? Oh, well, that's the... How can we exist? No, we, we can't exist without that. There must be concealment without exist, for us to exist. Right. So then, yes. So then when we're referring to Hashem as Kale Malach, yes. then how can... Well, I guess... Um, well, hold it. First of all, we're not putting Melech there, right? Okay. He's the Kale. Who is Kale, to who is or Enso. So... Let's, uh, I'll be try to make this as simple as possible. Uh, you, first of all, you're absolutely right. There's no, there's no such thing as existence that experiences itself apart from Hashem without concealment. At the very same time, everything that exists has within it literally what they call the nitzutz, the spark of infinity inside it. And we, we have, we've talked about this a few times, but we're just, it's, it's each time it's, it comes up, it's with a little bit different angle. So the question is, you know, or, the, or what needs to be understood is, both of these things exist simultaneously, infinity and finitude. And it's through the magic of what's called the tzimtzum. When Hashem made the tzimtzum, when he created this big, big contraction, He's made himself small. So there's a big argument amongst the Kabbalists about whether the Tzimtzum affected God himself or not. Or did it just affect those things after the Tzimtzum? So our Shita, our Shita is the Shita of the Arizal, is that the Tzimtzum had no effect on God himself. He remains just as he was before the Tzimtzum, infinite, without any limitation. And what the Tzimtzum did was create this paradox that infinity should reside in finitude. There's no world without finity, but at the same time, everything in the world is full of the infinite Ein So there's so, only Simpson from our perspective? There's only Simpson from the perspective of the creation. That's the whole purpose of the Simpson, to create something which has to, to cause something to exist that experiences itself outside of, of the infinite everything. But in that sense, and in that sense, that's why there's nothing which is separated from him. There is nothing which is apart from him. And why we can say, there is only him. That's 100% true. But at the same time, he's given us the experience of being outside of him and separate from him. And what we would call or what I would call uh, spiritual health, like physical health, mental health, spiritual health, is being able to contact the infinite within the finite that we are. Does that help or not? Silence. And basically what we're doing is we're, we're, we're contacting 
um, we're basically using the name Hegel in order to establish the connection between yes. the and infinity. Right, we're contacting the Kale. In the, in the Mimer I alluded to before, the first Mimer in this Parsha in Lakuti Taira, there's an expression of Hazal that Roshoyim Molei Haratois, evil people are full of regret. Uh, what I would colloquially call Jewish guilt. Where, and he says, where does it come from? It comes from the fact that at Matan Torah, every one of us received an infusion of this infinite experience. And that's why our souls love the body. We, the two can't coexist, except for the fact that God allows them to exist through the Simpson. So our souls flew out of our body. But as a result of that experience, every one of us has a chelik elata memal mamish, a piece of godliness, infinity, ourselves, within us. And yes, at the same time, we're built to feel ourselves as separate from that, and as I say, what I call spiritual health is being who you are with all the idiosyncratic beauty of who each and every one of us are, and at the same time, experiencing our connection with the infinite. So then it's not really just contacting, verbalizing meaning, the things that Kushbarako created using words. We're using a word in order to draw our attention, our consciousness, that we have that infinite being within us and in order to raise our awareness of the fact that there is no division. Right. Okay? Yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah. And that's available to us in Elam. That's Kale. The the Kale Kale is the uncovered essence with no coverings whatsoever. And we can touch that as we are individual lumbering people out into the field greeting the king. Can we go further? Malachi. Malachi and Nekro Yisrael, Malachian Shar, Kel. Sar. Sar Kel. Yeah. So the Jewish people are called, look at the word, Yis, word Yisrael. Break it apart. Yud, uh, Sar, Do you have another um, Mimer? Kel. Pardon me? Do you have another Mimer? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks. Oh, can you give me one? Okay. I gave one to John. Oh, okay, fine, sure. I have, I have tons of them here. Expecting like a whole horde of people, know. you know. I never know. It's <clears throat> raining. So. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to take the word Yud, Sar, Kel. So we see our name, Jewish people, Israel. Got it? Lamed Beis. You know Lamed Beis? Excuse me. Second column. The last of the little small letters. See the lines begin with the little small letters. That last thing were after that parenthesis. So therefore, yeah, we call Yisrael. We are, we have a Yud. We are Yidin. Mm -hmm. That's right. The Yud is, I mean, the Yud has many if different inter. I'm just, you know, first comes to my Yidin. We're all called Yidin. Why are we called Yidin? Because we have the Yud within us. They had, we have that condensed infinity into a point within us. And we are Asar. Asar is a ruler, an officer of Kale. So go on. So what does it mean? That we are Milush and Sar Kale. Uh, so here he uses the yud, not the way I said, but as a grammatical point. The yud in front of any any word, like ya'ase, means to, ase means to do, ya'ase means to continually do. So we, Jewish people, are in a, have a continual, constant ability to uh, to touch the level of ourselves, which is called Sar Kel, the prince of the infinity, of infinite end self, the prince of the Or end self. Um, yeah. He's just giving the grammatic here. This is Koka Yasa Iyav. It's a Pesach in Iyav. This is what Iyav used to do all the time. So we have a Yisrael, continual ability to be a Sar, a prince or a ruler a master of the Ein Sof Borahu. The Purish Shibachin Askel, who Sar U Mashal Vikar Vo. So the level of Kale is the Sar. That's what Israel says. We are Kale, we are a Sar Kale that we can rule over, literally. We can control, we can 
contact at will that that kale which is within us. Um, Dehainu she yesh bechol nefesh misrael nitzutz elokus mamish. So this means that in every one of us, there's a spark of in every Jewish soul. There's a spark of godliness. What we mean here, uh, Eliza, this really gets to your question. That in every one of us per se, you know, each individual person amongst the Jewish people, we have a spark of the infinite. We have the spark of the of elokus within us. Which this spark of godliness is what enlivens our godly soul. And this spark, like a spark in a fire, is drawn to burst into a big flame, to be drawn up. It's our, it's, its nature to go up above, to be a light in the light of, of life. An or be or a a light in the life of life. The uh, masor not show a love is marath. To completely give over ourselves to this infinite spark which is within us, we have that ability. It's like our nature. Well, it's not like our nature. It's our. It's not the nefesh ativis. It's not the animal nature, right? It's not the nature called nature, but it's the godly nature that's implanted in each of our souls. It, it's much higher, much deeper than wisdom and knowledge, which we also have as part of our soul structure. I have, I have Hello, uh, hi, uh, when? Go, can you just hold the questions for a little while? Just hold them. Because yeah. otherwise we'll get constantly into it. Let's, let's, we'll hold it, we'll finish the paragraph, and then we'll... Do questions. Lo haya masig bechina zu lebatel ve lehafkir. It's atzmoi. It's atzmo. Mikol v'kol she shvilo shvilo yisvara. So he said a lot. So it's it's much deeper than this chokma and das, right? Uh, and the das. The hadas loy hoya masi bechinazu das that faculty of das that we have, which is knowledge, knowers. You know, it's interesting. You know, in the world, of, uh, people to, uh, like to say that the, the, the what distinguishes the human species from others is this mental mental faculties that we have, mind faculties. What we're saying what really distinguishes the Jewish human is the faculties beyond mind, because das knowledge. Yeah, it doesn't get you to levato le to completely give yourself away entirely and to make everything and to make your whole being because I think for God, listen, I mean, here, what, what a Jew does, Jews are called, I think he uses this in their mind, I'm not sure, stiff necked people. <laughs> right? sure. And it's, it's usually used as a negative, <laughs> right? But in, this, in the mimer, it's used as a positive. Which means, no matter what you can tell me, if I'm in contact with the, this, the, the root of my soul, no matter what you can tell me, I, am, I believe in something which is inherently ungraspable. I have a, or as the, the, the Rebbe Rashav uh, defines, uh, there's an expression about what's, what's Bina, what is understanding. And uh, it's said in Zifre Kabbal, Facilis, as well as in philosophy, understanding is lahavin dover mitayk dover to understand one thing from another. So the usual way of looking at that is sort of inductive or deductive reasoning. I, if I see this, I can infer that. The way that Rabbi Rashad defines it is to understand one thing from another is to understand that there is a reality which is beyond understanding, and to bring that into mm -hmm. your mind. How do you understand something that to understand can't be that which is under to understand that there is something which is un not understandable? You can't understand it, but you understand that there is something. Also, the understanding that we build upon another understanding, so you have this mistake. Yeah, but that's that's the normal way of looking at it. building as inference or deduction, building from one thing to another. Mm -hmm. This is a, a little bit of a chiddush. The, the the deeper meaning is not that. Is to uh, understand that there are that there is a reality 
that we don't understand can and you, completely accept that. Can you connect this with the, uh, the unconscious id? Well, you know, here we get into Freud, and, and I'd rather not because okay. from Freud's concept of the id was very, uh, the deeper he went, the more base he went. Mm. Mm. And we're going the other way around. Mm, yeah. The deeper we go, the higher we go, right? So I could, I could tie it in with another construct of Freud. Freud has a three-dimensional construct of mind, which is the conscious, the pre-conscious, and the unconscious. So that I can, that there's, if you use that terminology, I mean, I'm only going to use it because you brought it up, but we don't usually use it. Unconscious is the depths of the soul. See, unconscious means you're not aware of it. Right. Right. But we're talking here about levels that are deeper than understanding, deeper, deeper than what we normally call our conscious mind, and connecting with them. And that's a faculty that we have because of our, our godly soul. So listen to this. This is a pasuk that you probably have heard. We are children to God. What does it mean to be a child to God? What's, think about the, the, the parent-child relationship. You inherited a genetic structure from your father. We've inherited a metaphorical genetic structure from our father. And what is our father? Our father is the Ein Sobotical, the infinite one, blessed be he. We've inherited that ability to connect with the Ein Sobotical. It's our birthright. But we inherit things from our mother also. <laughs> yes. So. Well, it just says children. Right. It says children. It doesn't say we. Mother, I probably said father, right? Right. Yeah. How do we know if it's a the dominant says or a recessive gene? <laughs> well, you know, he's asking, how do we know it's a dominant or recessive gene? Hmm. I'm laughing because I could say, well, we'll look at how you behave, okay. right? right? But that's not a good proof either, right? In other words, if, if you behave that way, it must be a recessive gene, right? Because you're not behaving with your... No, but I'll say it the way, maybe the way Hasidus would say it. We can live an existence in which it's recessive, that reality, which is that we are and we have the genealogy, the spiritual genealogy to express infinity. We can live outside of that and cut ourselves off from it, in which case your recessive would apply. But we want to make it dominant because it's there. And remember, when we receive, don't we receive from, when we receive, when Hashem, Okay. Are you guys on, just a question, are you guys on the phone picking up conversation at the table? Yeah, we can do. Okay, good. In that regard, that we are like that, we are predisposed to certain ge genetics, Genetic right, from our parents, right? Yeah. Um, does Hashem give Hashem gives to us from both aspects? No, like when we do, even when we go through Seder Hestalshalos, like there's the feminine aspects of Seder Hestalshalos and the masculine aspects of it. Right. Yes. Was that a question or something? No, I, it was more of right. like a, a statement. Just, yeah, yeah, just right. piggybacking off of what you said before, <clears throat> that when we talk about father, like in this regard, we need to know that we get both feminine yeah. and masculine aspects. But I, I mistakenly brought up the word father. Is it Bunim, we're children to our Shem right. right? Ki, oh, here he does, uh, here okay. he does say, by the way, son. Ki bara, ki bara dabu, it's Aramaic. It's an expression from Zohar. And it does use the masculine. A son is like the leg of the father. But it, but it, means, it means a child is like the leg of the father. We're, we're one body, right? We people, Klal Yisro, is one body with God. Now, everybody is one body with God, but we're one body with God at a level which is Kadma Oilam, which precedes any kind of creation and precedes even his thought. We, we're, we're one, and that's the distinctiveness of the Helek Elekamimah, the spark of God that we have within us. Because we are who Shenichlal who Shenichlal the Ratzana Shel Aviv So just like the child, before the child is formed, is included in an amorphous unformed way in the will of the parent Blishum Tam Vadas Kmo Bechinas Regel Shed so the child has this ability. Where does the, the, I'm explaining something here very significant. Let's try to get. 
Where comes the ability for us to be bottled to Hashem? It comes, we're working an analogy. Just like the foot is bottled to the head, right. when things are going normally at least. Mm -hmm. So we, because we have that genetic connection at essence, and with a chelik and a kai at all, we have a, an essential ability, not something unnatural, just something that needs a little work to bring out because our separateness in this world where this thing is hidden causes it to be obscured. But it's our, it's our, it's our godly nature. And just like the foot behaves according to the head, the Jew is designed to behave according to his godly essence. Uh, and we have no other will at all. Really. Um, El, no, here it's El, El Adam. El Adam, uh, Pinimius, Ratsana, Yisbar. And a person is designed, I'm putting in the words designed to, nullify your will in front of his will in order that there will shine to the person the Pinimius, the innermost dimensions of God's will. And for that to happen, Tsarich Lebatel Kal Ritsonov Ritsonosov Shalo Yeh Lo Ritson Achar. And to do this, one has to nullify all of one's other wills, and that he should have or she should have, one should have no other will than this. Mm. All right, that's the mission statement. That's what we're. That's our starting point. <laughs> and I'm just going to say where we're going to go. We want to stop. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Where we're going to go from this is, while well, there are impediments, right? We're not all there Impediment. necessarily, yeah. right? So how? Do Why we is it so difficult to live according to our nature, right? What's in the way, and how can we deal with what's in the way, is the subject of chapters two. And three. How many installments are we doing? Well, I think we'll do till uh, till Rosh Hashanah, you know, unless we finish Stay early. Stay tuned for next week. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap. Uh, let me give any minutes while we're wrapping up here. Any questions hanging that need that we should address? And who's doing the who's doing the research research on? Okay. Yeah, well, of course we do have access to it every day of the year. Uh, the, remember, these years go to Saratham, you know, some things we say in davening it all every day of the year. And every day of the year, it's a process of Isarusa de la Sato, Isarusa de la Ela, right? We are, and the arousal from below is meant to affect the arousal from above. But here we're dealing with what's interfering with our Isarusa de la Sato. In other words, if we did the Isarusa de la... Yeah. Yeah? What's holding us back? If we weren't held back, if we weren't held back, and that's a broad topic, in other words, be behaving in ways not totally aligned 100% with who we really are, the Etsum, we would be living in Geula. So it's important to know what's, what's, what's the problem <laughs> and how to fix it. So we'll have some advice in the next one. And all of us, I think, are going to research because... Nobody stepped up to it. Why Havaya Havaya comes before Kale? So we'll all give a, see what we can find out. All right, good. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much. This is a good length. Huh? Like... Yeah, we, yeah, we should end before 10. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a good yeah, thing. Good to I don't want to ask this. Yeah. It's good. We went by very quickly. You started at 8? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Well, that means you were having a good time. I guess. I think as it was raining, people didn't come. Yeah. We usually get like really telling. John, you want to get you something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you are you good? Are you officially a guy by there, Spencer, or do you just do it on your own?
Dolayısıyla yok. Biz de kapıları. Okay. Oh, I just finished it. Mm -hmm.